created a lot of excitement in the earlier game. Duke won and won handily over Florida State. And one of the guys who disappeared offensively that they have to get big points put from tonight, and that's Edwards. The only game this year that he has not scored in double figures in that game. They're a different team from the first time. When you looked at the score, 86-70, Duke was up by 25. But Charlie Ward was not starting at the point guard slot. They made an adjustment. They put the ball in Ward's hands, who has it here, and they moved Sam Cassell to the scoring guard slot. Ward, of course, has an opportunity to become the number one quarterback. Back door, sir, to the number. Excellent two-man basketball. Great look by Douglas Edwards. He's a multi-dimensional talent. Trap on Leitner in the corner. It's on the floor. Gets it back to Hurley, and he gets whacked in the mouth by Cassell. Unintentional. First foul on him, first team foul. Sura made a great backdoor cut as we look at the standings right now. Florida State in second place, and four of those W's came on the road. It's amazing. First trip into Chapel Hill, and they got a victory. Not many people do that in this league. Man-to-man -man defense, but we'll see multi-defenses by Florida State. Can he handle this guy? Edwards working against him. Leitner with the turnaround. It's not there as Grant Hill battles for it. Leitner will get the save. Sura for Florida State. Sura's been what a surprise. Oh, what a great transition play. Hit the trailer. They need this early for confidence. After a goal, they're going to zone trapping defenses. On a missed shot, they're coming back playing man-to-man. -man. That'll be a goal, Tan. Score the goal to Grant Hill. What electricity in this city today. From the moment <laughs> I arrived, I can't believe it, Ron. Tallahassee is all basketball today. Pat Kennedy is the architect of this ball club that has got 13 wins. And I mentioned the five wins in the conference. Most people thought that maybe they would win five in the conference, and that was about it. They're already there. If they are to pull the win here tonight, it will not be, cool, be because Duke is not ready to play mentally. See, they're going to spread the court, go to a little one-on-one -on -one to utilize their quickness. Almost like a four-corners attack. Edwards. Interesting strategy that they utilize right there in that possession. What a great pass by Summer. They are attacking Duke. They are taking the ball right at the national champs. Edwards with the steal. Sura and the freshman takes it strong to the hoop and he traveled. Dickie Picaro with the ball. Sura took the extra hop. But what's impressive, even though he turned it over, Ron, is that they're not intimidated, that they are attacking with the basketball. Six to two, our score. We are just about to complete the first two minutes of this one. Duke's a boys team, and that's why they're a championship team. Leitner with the finger roll. Most versatile big player of the senior class in America along the baseline. Bobby Knight told me the other day, he said he is the difference. People cannot match up against Duke, against Christian Lake. We're in a 1-2-2 two, two stack. The lob inside to Edwards. Gets it, and he'll go to the line. Douglas Edwards has played early in this game like the young man who came out of high school out of Miami, rated the number two high school player in America behind Kenny Anderson. See, they lay a little screen, and there's the backdoor cut. There's no help by Duke. Leitner is slow, rotating over. Edwards squares his body. The key that you saw there was the ability to square the body. Mike Krzyzewski on the sideline has to be a little concerned. Thomas Hill with the foul at his first. They're playing like a basketball team that wasn't blown out by this team the first time. 69% of the season at the free throw line for Florida State. See, the reason they go to the half-court trap after a score is to slow Duke down in transition. Grant Hill can't get it. Plays volleyball with it, knocks it out of bounds, it will go to the Seminole. Let me just simply explain the philosophy of Pat Kennedy. What he is doing on the made shot, he is rotating into a trapping defense to slow down Duke in transition. On a missed shot, they are defensively coming in transition back into man-to-man. Charlie Ward. This is the poorest exhibition of defense by Duke I have seen in many a year in the first few minutes of this game, Ron. 
Right now, this is Duke's largest deficit of the year. They're down 11 to 4. Nobody has led them by 7. Dick. Well, it's early right now, but I'm talking about when I say a poor effort on the defensive end, they seem to be a little bit flat and a little bit passive. The foul on Ward. Team foul number two. First on him. Laker likes it out top. He'll take that three-pointer without hesitation. Thomas Hill has to bat it back, and it's, he'll steal it again. Hurley tries to penetrate. They trap on him. Excellent job to stop Hurley's penetration. Hurley for three. Not there. Davis can't get it. Over and back. Duke looks a step slow right now early in the game. And the kids from Florida State are playing like they really believe they can win. And it's because what this guy has instilled in them all day today, we can win. Florida State, you certainly can win when you're 5-5. Five five. They go to the spread again. They're spreading the court to get some really good spacing and to utilize speed and quickness and penetrate. The Sal missed on the wild pass, gets the carom, and here's Lincoln. That's the first shot that Florida State has missed. Duke is 2 of 5 from the floor so far. Bobby Hurley. Excellent Bobby penetration Hurley. by Bob Hurley. His dad won his 500th game as a high school coach at St. Anthony's last week. Should be coaching on a collegiate level, a tremendous talent out of St. Anthony's in Jersey City. Bobby Sower, one of the real diaper dandies in America. That was touched last by, touched last by Laker. It'll stay with Florida State. So let's take a timeout. 15 of 58 to play in the opening half. The Noel by five. Yeah, and I also want to show want you to freeze it there because there's a philosophy they're utilizing, okay? Let me see it. Hey, I tell you, have you seen it? They came out. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I just wanted to check it in case we needed it. Duke came out. I thought passive, didn't you? They took it yeah, right out a little of the bit. Layups. I meant to tell you about. They worked on this half court yesterday, and I'm gonna tell you something, Dick. As, as quick as they are. Okay, sir. Oh, great look. All right, I want to show you where the freeze comes. Okay. I'm, I want the first one, the first one. All right, I'll show you. When Sir stuck right in there. See how three guys, he draws three guys to him. Yep, yep. okay. You're taking it, right? Yep. Okay. Watch Bob Surer right now break down the defense with penetration. He drives the butt. Freeze it. There are three Duke players now that he has drawn, and he has the great eyes. He spots Edwards right there for the jam. The three D man. He drove. He drew the defense to him, and he dished the rock. Now watch the transition right here to the trailer. Excellent communication. There's the bounce off the floor by Doug Edwards, number 32. His brother Steve, he's a great high school player out of Miami. And the question is, will he play for Miami or will he play for Florida State? Points in the paint right now. Florida State has the edge. Nick, I mentioned in the opening that, that last Saturday night after the NC State game that the crowd went into the chant, we want Duke. Mike Krzyzewski got a recording of that and took his team in after their last game and set him down and played that to him for two minutes so that they could understand what kind of environment they were coming into here tonight. And Grant Hill said very calmly, well, they got Duke. <laughs> Duke's an excellent spurt basketball team. Let's see what adjustments they made during that timeout. Charlie Ward to Sura. That's blocked by Laker. Laker says, wait a minute, Sura. I'm an All-American. You can't bring the rock in the lane against me. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Christian Leighton is going to rotate over defensively. There's the block. Will it be Leighton or will it be Alonzo Mourning, the number one player out of the senior class? Edwards feeds it off to Dobard. Not there in a travel. 
twice now Florida State has had the ball in deep and they have uh, turned it over with a walk. Well, the strategy they're utilizing is excellent. As long as you are in command, as long as you are in the lead, you can dictate what you want to do out of that spread, especially with their quickness. Do you see what Charlie Ward was doing right there? He was talking to Dick Paparo as he came down playing defense. I think he was asking him about either possible hand check or what he could do against Hurley. Charlie Ward is an excellent defensive player. As everyone knows, it's been documented. He will be the quarterback next year for Bobby Bowden. That's amazing to play two major sports and be able to contribute at the level that he contributes. He really is a special kid too, Dick. Really a sweetheart. He wants this challenge against Hurley. He's got excellent foot speed defensively. Lakers suspends Edwards will pick up the foul. That's going to be the third team foul against Florida State. Key matchup right there. Edwards has to do an excellent job of trying to neutralize Leitner. You're not going to stop him, but he must neutralize him. What a, what a career he's had, Ron. It's just been a brilliant career. But this past weekend, he became the seventh player in Duke history to score over 2,000 points. I think if you look at Duke right now, you have to pick the five best players of all time. He has to be in that lineup. I also think if you look at the NBA draft, you and I were talking about it today, of the senior class, I think I'd give the edge to Alonzo Mourning. Mourning's not playing with the cast like Christian's playing with that Duke. In fact, he doesn't have a whole lot of help on the perimeter. I think Alonzo's physical strength will give him the edge. He would be number one, Lakeman number two, and Todd Day number three in the NBA draft for the senior class. Now Duke for pressure. They're in a proper place, having a reverse man, then looking diagonal. Kicked out of bounds, he'll get a new 45. Sarah forced that action. What he should have done right there is pick up the dribble and shoot the little jump shot. Ryan Davis matched up on Sarah, an outstanding defensive player. Senior against the diaper dandy. Scored 2,400 points in high school, Sarah. There's the spread. Edwards, not there. Dobard will be called over the back. Coming up, trying to get the tip. Actually, what he wanted to do, he wanted Casal to come on along the baseline, did Ward. And for some reason, Casal stopped because he did uh, have an opening. Dobard gotten foul trouble a few times, has a little problem with his knee, and Andre Reed has given him some positive minutes, the big guy, especially against Georgia Tech when he came off the bench for eight points and eight rebounds. 11 to 8, Florida State, and you notice that nobody has substituted so far in this one, and we've already played five and a half minutes. Lakner, the other direction, knocks it down, and he's warm. That's six points for him already. Well, they're getting the ball inside really deep to Lakner, and he has that excellent touch. Charlie Ward, quarterback, ball handler. Bobby Hurley plays really relentless team defense. Casal with the nice mood. That's going to be an offensive foul. As Dick Paparo says, you gained an advantage when you spun around him. Sam Cassells from out of Dunbar High School out of Maryland. Then he went to Maine Central. That's his second foul. Had a great two years of San Jacinto Junior College out of Texas where they produced a lot of great players. Walter Berry came from that school. Former St. John's Player of the Year. Lob. Grand Hill, and he whacked his head on the bottom of the glass. They love to run that diagonal play. Offensive foul. They have to get a little bit better control with each possession. They're playing a little bit out of control now. Watch this replay, Dick. He does whack his head. See, Bob Early, the eyes, the eyes. He throws the lob over the top. And there comes Hill. I'll tell you what. He was so high, it may be good that he hit his shoulder first because it started his body away from him, lessening the impact. They're trying to post time and say, oh, offensive foul. They missed it inside on Hill. Oh, wow. And the Dukies are sitting here a couple hundred score go wild. Davis <laughs> called for the offensive foul. First on Davis, second team foul. Ryan Davis gets into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Thomas Hill gets out of his way. Defense rotates over. Edwards out high, working against Hill. Thomas Hill doing an excellent job on Sammy Cassell, outstanding scorer. 
Ball was kicked and again a new 45. Notice how they tried to post up on Hurley, take him away from the perimeter and bring him to the inside. The first substitutes of the ball game coming in. We'll see number four, Chuck Ingram, who is a 6'3 junior out of Augusta, normally as a starter. Well, what a leaper. 41-inch vertical on him. And Andre Reed, the sophomore, seven-footer in the middle. Ram's a very streaky shooter. He can hit the three, but he is, as you said, an outstanding athlete. Charlie Ward can't get it to go. The battle inside, and it's Grant Hill who comes away with it. Here's the quickness from hash mark to hash mark. Duke has great explosiveness. Hurley for three. Count it. So intense, Bob Hurley. All the adjectives are flowing before the game by Mike Krzyzewski about Bobby Hurley. First lead for Duke, they're up by two. They were down by the largest margin to anyone this year earlier, down by seven. But very calmly, came back as the number one team will do, and have taken over the lead. Got to get the ball away from the trap. Got to find a reverse man. Graham for three, not there. Davis again. Temple's starting to go to the side of Duke right now. Knocked loose, back to Hurley. This will be three if it goes. Put it down. The Ram Florida State, by the way, made their first five field goals without a miss. Now they've missed their last five. Because they're not really getting good shots. Shot selection has been poor. I was going to say a little bit earlier, Ron, initially the rap on Hurley was his ability to shoot the perimeter shot. He has improved that immensely. Look at the love right here. These guys are so together. Great chemistry. All winning teams must possess that. The chemistry, especially in a game of basketball. Tommy Amicus sitting there, former Duke outstanding point guard and assistant, talking to Christian. Grant Hill picked up that foul. It's his first, the third team foul on the Blue Devils. Graham. Serve for three. Davis with the long carom, and here come the Blue Devils. Ahead to Grant Hill, and he gets the easy two. Fantastic catch by Grant Hill. Excellent job in transition. Poor job by Florida State getting back. 18 to 11. See, Duke's really doing an outstanding job defensively. They are anticipating the backdoor cut, and they are really doing an excellent job of rotating over and giving help. 13 or 11.38 until halftime. Duke by seven. Fourteen zero run, Dickie. Yeah, that's just that's Duke. Thirteen. Well, I tell you one thing you can see is Duke is doing an excellent job on the defensive end. They're anticipating that backdoor cut now. Yeah. They're rotating over quicker. They're inviting it almost and anticipating it. He has to change his strategy now and get away from that. I'm going to tell you something. I thought the spread when they used it, Duke was kind of confused on how to yeah. handle it, didn't you think? Yeah, but now they're back. They, they got it pretty well nailed, I think. Okay. Osceola needs to get some magic working. A 14-0 run by the top-ranked Duke Blue Devils. By the way, coming up after this game, Southern Mississippi against number 16 Tulane. And, of course, that means the posse, the guys who come off the bench, the green wave, off to an excellent start this season. Harry Clark, one of the hot coaches in America. It also means Clarence Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon, many people feel, has a great chance to be a lottery selection from Southern Mississippi. Antonio Lang has come to the ballgame for Duke. He's in her eight-man rotation. 
loose inside. Davis battles for it, and that will be a jump ball. The arrow says it stays with the Blue Devils. Individual scoring. Hurley has eight, Leitner six, Edwards seven for Florida State. Mike was interesting before the game when he talked about matchups. He told us that he feels that his club matches up really well with Florida State because he feels they have the quickness. We have the quickness to match up with their quicknesses where a lot of teams really have a problem with the quickness of the cell and more. And most people are not most, but some people might think that Florida State is quicker, but I, I, that's not really the case, is it? Not with Mike Krzyzewski. He said, hey, we have great quickness. Bob Hurley, Davis, Hill. Is zoning right now, trying to slow down tempo a little bit. Florida State needs a stop and a score. Duke's on a 14-zip run. Thomas Hill with the miss. Here comes Charlie Ward. Douglas Edwards has got to make himself active now. He's the guy that can score. He's the guy that can finalize. So this is it all. Probably should have taken the shot. Dished it a little strong. Reed wasn't looking for it, and a turnover against Florida State. One of the real problems I feel with Douglas Edwards, I don't think he keeps himself active enough offensively. He's got to flash to the ball, make those hard cuts to the ball. Same thing we talked about with Chris Weber, outstanding player. I think what happens, guys like Weber and Edwards are so dominant in high school that they can get away with just standing. Cheryl will get a break. He goes to the bench. Casal, Graham, Ward working in the backboard. Bison. Florida State plays some combination defenses as well. Some man in zone. Jump ball is the block on Davis. Now it will be Florida State's ball. And they have not scored in a considerable amount of time. I was going to say, they're stuck on 11. It's long, long time. Jumped out to the 11-4 lead. Duke will pick him up full court. Going to a full court trap, zone trap. Got to look diagonal. Didn't go. That will come out of bounds. It'll stay with Florida State. The Seminoles have not scored in almost six minutes. Sam Cassell's got to start to get on fire. He's their big time scorer. There's Sammy from out of Dunbar High School. He's made the initial adjustment to the college game without any problem. He's a combination guard. He can play the pointer to second guard slot. Graham. That's blocked by Tony Lang and Paul Goldtending. So score the hoop to Graham and Florida State finally gets off at 11. Antonio Lang from out of Mobile, LaFleur High School, where Angelo Hamilton of Oklahoma played. There's the block. Does he get it? Close. Looked like it was definitely though on the way down. Got to get it on the way up. Look at Bob Hurley. Loves to play. Stat that impressed me the most about Hurley. Played 80 minutes in the final four. 40 minutes each game against the Rutgers. Pressure from Vegas, Kansas. Leitner wanted the three, but he'll dish it. That's what makes Leitner so good. His passing ability as well. He has such excellent maneuverability. Shot clock is now down to 10. Edwards picks up the foul. Just a silly foul. Away from the basket. The year Douglas came out, Anderson. Kenny Anderson was a great player. Douglas Edwards, Jimmy Jackson. The end of his junior year, second personal foul. Lawrence Funderburk also was in that group. Allen Houston, they were the best high school players in America when they came to the Nike camp after their junior year. Very similar to Indiana. Look at that statistic. They have made 352. Their opponents have only attempted 242. And the reason for that, Ron, is their ability to spread the court, dribble penetration, and attack the defense. Isn't it unbelievable that Indiana and Duke are very similar in that? Could there be a similarity that Mike Krzyzewski at one time played under Bobby Knight? Eight points now for Lakner. 20 to 13 is top-ranked Duke now has taken this one in command early after falling behind by seven. Douglas is an excellent passer. They really say he has improved. He's had a problem with foul trouble where he's played like 18 minutes in the past and has had to go to the bench. There's that triple penetration we talked about. He made that happen. 
They got to make this count. Graham not there. Curley battles, can't get it, and Edwards loses it, and he was fouled. I'll tell you, everything about Duke, though, is just class like you can't believe. Starts with the leader, Mike Krzyzewski, as we look at the old fans, and it's just permeated with everybody around his program. Even the Cameron crazies, everybody tries to imitate them, and that's the that's the sign of flattery like you can't believe. But they are so unique down there at Cameron Indoor Stadium, as long as they don't get out of control on Sportsmanlike. And they've been pretty good. They just cheer like crazy for their team. Davis picks up the foul of his second. Now a whistle away from the ball. Doug Edwards just picked up his third. Now he has not been disqualified this year in any one game, but he is going to have to go to the bench now. And we still have 8:42 left until halftime. That's a big foul because Douglas is Mr. Versatility for them. He's the guy that can play inside, outside, pass the basketball. He rebounds well. His stats are up now in the ACC. Two silly fouls by Douglas. The one down on the other end, and now we're going to get one here. He's trying to get post position inside. He's trying to get post position, and he gets nailed. Baseline official right on it. Freddie Barakat would be very happy. This kid was a valedictorian in high school. Can't get the second one to go. Well, that makes it easier when you get players that are awfully good students, doesn't it? Well, that's the advantage that Mike has at Duke. It's going to be Grant Hill picking up the foul. Grant Hill, another classy young man. Dad went to Yale, played for the Dallas Cowboys. Mom graduated from Wellesley. When you get those kind of people, and you get that kind of character, that all leads to winning. When you combine the character with the talent. Chef Graham, the junior from Augusta, goes to the line, as we mentioned. Hunter has a 41-inch vertical, so he, he can play small forward because with that kind of jump, even at 6'3", with that kind of leaping ability, it's like a 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, kid. And he also has an excellent shot from deep. He's got good range. He's a little bit streaky as a shooter, but he is a three-point shooter. They had those good wins you talked about. I mean, it's not easy going down to Chapel Hill and get a Whoa, W, no. and then go to Georgia Tech or Wake Forest. Graham now with four points. It's a four-point game, and that obviously brings the crowd back into it. And as soon as they score, they go to the zone. They get a little trap and fall back into the zone. Stolen. Dobard. Graham had to do some kind of move to get the ball back on the floor. He was about to travel with it. Dobard, not there. On the floor, Thomas Hill comes away with it for Duke. Let me ask you something. He can almost play any one of the first four spots. He, is he good enough to play point as well? Oh, without, without a doubt. Grant Hill can definitely play point on a collegiate level. And when he goes to the NBA, he can play on a perimeter. He's got that kind of ability. He may, when it's all said and done, be one of the great players in the history of Duke. Uh, you want to show this after a score. I've been talking a lot about how they come out of a score and they're changing defenses. What they're doing is on a missed shot, they're playing man to man. On a made shot, they're playing zone trap and fall into the zone. Yeah, I, what I want to show to people what, what's happening on a made free throw, too. On a free throw, too. You might show it out of here. Do you have it out of here? On a made free throw. The last free throw they made. You watch, they'll go to a trap to slow Duke down. They don't want Duke to push the ball up the court. They're staying in the game. No, 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 you're showing offense. I want to show defense. I want to show Florida State. No, 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 Florida State. Florida State. Now watch, see, they'll, they'll make the free throw the second one and watch him come back into a zone trap. See, now they'll come back to zone trap. And they'll 
Okay. Ron, here's an example on the made free throw and the made goal that Florida State will jump into a trap defense to try and slow Duke from running the ball up the court. See, now the ball's going to come up the floor. They're going to go into a zone trap. They're going to go to a little half-court trap. There's Hurley. They're going to rotate. There it is right now. And then they rotate from that into a straight 2-3 zone. On a missed shot, they are coming back playing man-to-man -man defense. 23-17. to 17. Duke leading Florida State. Florida State jumped out by seven points. Now the Blue Devils on top. I just love the way Hurley just brings the ball down the gut of the defense. Gobard comes down with the rebound. Casal got it. Zach is an excellent one-on-one -on -one player. It was a two-point shot, not a trifecta. And it's, it's his first two of the night. And you mentioned they got to have some scoring out of him. Well, he's a big-time scorer. He's a 20-point scorer. What an excellent pass. Diagonal pass right over the top of the defense by Leighton. His size allows him to make that pass. They're playing, trying to sag inside, allowing Duke to play with the ball on the perimeter. Try to match up. Leitner gets clobbered by the big fella. Andre Reid, only a sophomore from Miami Sunset. Foot speed is a problem for Andre Reid. There's Leitner getting in really deep. He hesitated right there. Should have taken it up quickly. He utilized the head fake, and the head fake drew the contact. Boy, that ball fake and head fake is such an advantage for young people learning how to play. Leitner already has eight points in the game. And the beat goes on and on for Duke. Next year, they bring in Tony Moore at 6'9", from out of Newport Prep, out of Maryland. Then they bring in Chris Collins. If he's anything like that, Evil Eye, <laughs> I'll tell you, Doug was a great, great player at Illinois State. His son, 6'3", from out of Glenbrook North High School. They tell me he can flat out shoot the ball from out of Illinois. He'll be an outstanding addition for the perimeter. And then Grant Hill told me tonight, he said, hey, they're going to get my buddy. Plays at my high school, one of the top five juniors in America. Joey Beard, he says, Joey's not going to Carolina or Virginia. He's coming with me to do. Christian Leitner, six of six at the free throw line. Ten points. Sammy's trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Playing against a tough defender. Thomas Hill trying to keep the ball away from him. Charlie Ward. Reed touched it last. It'll be Duke's basketball. Mike Krzyzewski heavily involved with the Olympic team will be an assistant to Chuck Daly on all the committees, the selection committee. There's that penetration by Hurley. Leitner for three. Thank you, Mr. Leitner, but it's created by his buddy, Bob Hurley. Two All-Americans. If I pick my Rolls-Royce team today, Hurley, Jimmy Jackson, Leitner, Shaquille, and Byron Houston. Well, Leitner's got 13 of Duke's 28 points. Thomas Hill will pick up that foul. Florida State really has outstanding quickness on the perimeter. You look at Ward, Cassell, and also at Graham, that gives them outstanding quickness. Sixth all-time leading scorer now. Out of Buffalo, Nichols Prep. She's got a great mom. She's written me several times. And Beautiful lady. Had a chance to share some time last year at the preseason NIT in the lobby with Mr. and Mrs. Leitner. Something special, Ron, about the ACC, the environments, the excitement. Basketball is really king. When you look at the entire environment and rating a conference from top to bottom, the coaching, the players, the cheerleaders, the pageantry, the fans, the ACC is definitely you know, number one. 28 to 20. Well, they do love their hoops. And I'll tell you, they're going to get better in football. They're already getting better before Florida State came into the league. Thomas Hill puts up the left-handed shot, banks it off the glass. There's an answer about Grant Hill. Grant Hill's playing a point out on the top. Hurley moved over to the wing, and Grant Hill utilized his penetration to get Thomas Hill free. 
Thomas's father works at the University of Oklahoma as uh, an academic counselor there. And his younger brother plays down at Texas, Lamont. Let's make those three. He can shoot the three. Graham now with eight points. And he didn't start the basketball game. He's come on strong. Now here's the half court trap. Surprise Duke's not flashing somebody to the middle of the floor. Oh, they just did. Thomas Hill, a little bit late, started to pop into the middle of the floor. You mentioned Thomas Hill. I think one of the contacts that Mike Krzyzewski had with Thomas was the fact that when Mike worked at West Point as the head coach in basketball, Mr. Hill was the head track coach at West Point. Oh, look at that score at halftime. That hurts. 44-18. What do you say, coach? Iona. That's where Pat Kennedy uh, worked under Jimmy Valvano, then got the job as a head coach, had a great run, had four 20-game seasons in a row. On the line for the Blue Devils, Grant Hill. He told me today that the thing he's really proud of the most is the fact that 34 or 35 of his players have graduated since he's been coaching. And it was great to hear a coach really feel proud of that aspect. Talking about Mr. Kennedy, we know they're graduating down to Duke. Grant Hill with seven points. Even though Mike was upset and didn't hang the banner one year because three of the players did not graduate at that time in terms of the Final Four. Talking about Al Donabi, who ultimately did get his degree. Oh. Stolen by Grant Hill. And stolen back by Charlie Ward. What Here's an effort. Jam. All the way up. Very simple. Great steal. Four points for Sam Casal now. It's back to a seven-point game. Four and a half until halftime. Nice score on the inside. Goldbard, he's been really big for them in the last few games. Florida State got a little fortunate because we, for some reason, did not catch the ball. They are hanging tough. Very important psychologically to go in at halftime. These last four minutes are really big. They cannot allow a Duke spurt. Grant Hill followed by Davis. Duke has such versatility in Davis, Thomas Hill, and Grant Hill. They are slashers. They are rebounders. They're quickness. Excellent defensive players. Look at Pat Kennedy. Graham gets the foul. It's his second. Great story about Pat. He became a coach when he worked under Ed Donahue up at uh, King's College. He worked under Ed Donahue in this aspect. His first two years he played, and he was really all Brick City. He was like my, my old Mason team, couldn't play. <laughs> Finally, his last two years, he became like an assistant coach to Ed Donahue, who gave him a start, then he went to Lehigh, and then Jimmy brought him over to Iona in 1980. Last night, Pat had a big uh, party at his house because it's a kickoff of the Special Olympics down here in uh, Leon County, and uh, Coach K came straight from the airport and came over and, and helped him out as they uh, had the initiation of the opening party for for the fun. He's such a likable guy, Pat. And Mike Krzyzewski and his staff, Mike Bray, Tommy Amica, Peter Gadet. 21 in a row. Last loss was down to the guys in Chapel Hill, but it happened in the ACC tournament, North Carolina. And they got a date with them next week, next Wednesday. Jeffy, by the way, I... I mean, it goes without saying. You, Dickie and I now have just become a. If he's talking, I just, you know, I don't interrupt. Okay, I'll never. Well, I'll get out. Don't worry about it. I'll get out. <laughs> I, I can get See, out. If he now. doesn't, I hit him. <laughs> Two years ago, I couldn't get out. I get out now. <laughs> we got a lot in common, David and I. It's a great line for you. David and I got fired the same year as coaches in the NBA. <laughs> But Ron say that. Hey, Dick, I heard you and uh, today, you and Dave got something in common. You both got the yaks. <laughs> yeah, didn't he? Yeah.
Like I said, which hurt them tonight. Yeah. He's like Weber in a way. Have some great, great games. They don't move. They're too talented. All right. Nineteen sixty-eight, a very good year for the Seminoles. We'll show you one of the reasons why. As the team honored tonight, most people recognize Dave Cowens with Boston. They forget that he was a Florida State Seminole. Tremendous rebounder. He said one of the biggest wins ever was against Jacksonville, 89-83, when they beat Jacksonville with artist Gilmore in 1970. That team went on to the Final Four at Jacksonville. He was 60 and 19 in his three years here at Florida State. Huey Durham had him. Well, the crowd just went wild when he was introduced tonight as his team was being honored. And it took him forever to, to, to read his list of superlatives. Who's just zoning right now out of a timeout? Cherokee Parks in the floor. Cherokee number 44. Dishes inside. Nice run. Gavard with his fourth point. By the way, Dick, the last game that you and I did together with Duke was the night that Cherokee injured his leg, and it cost him about a month, which was, for a freshman, it's really cost him. That was the St. John's game where Duke was outstanding and had a five-minute spurt. They missed late. Look at late. Late, they said they didn't throw me the ball. I was wide open. He still got his hands up. This is guys. I've been wide open. That was excellent penetration by Charlie Ward. Louisville up more on Charlotte. Jeff Mullins, former Duke Super. Rutgers really struggling. Massachusetts Calipari with a big, big lead. Tommy Fenders is leading DCU by a second. Oh, nice lob to Dobard, and it's blocked by Parks and then the follow by Graham. Graham with the great leg. 41 inch vertical. The great legs, the great bounce off the floor. They're going to go in halftime right there. Graham has 10 points off the bench. Great spark by Graham. Ooh, almost the back door. Back, back court. Poor call by Dickie Bacaro. I thought that was a poor call. I thought it was a block. I didn't feel the defensive player was there. He tried to get the sideline to be another defensive player by bringing him to the sideline, but I thought he bumped him. Peter Gadette to the left of Mike Krzyzewski, former head coach at West Point. Thomas Hill goes out of the game. Grant Hill is back into the lineup. Well, nice screen by Reed, but see the two kids get over the top of it? Reed with the jumper. Can't get it to go. Leitner comes away with the rebound, and he's called for a trap. Before that sequence and the two missed shots, Florida State had rolled off five in a row. Three-point game, 2.08 left until the intermission. It's really interesting that they're hanging with Vince Free, Ron, with Douglas Edwards on the sideline, picking up that third foul, their best all-around player. Well, Graham has been the man that carried the uh, the banner. Uh, not, a, not a good play in bouncing the basketball. They got a lucky break to get the ball back. Special situations are key for a team. Graham for three. Good hustle to come back with it, and the ball is kicked. New 45, and the ball stays with the Seminoles. Shot selection really poor in that sequence. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders and Bill Raftery. Also uh, top 25 scores and highlights, Ohio State and uh, Illinois. Okay. Good touch, Ron. Yes, an excellent touch. Hey, last night, another undefeated team bit the dust. Bye-bye, UCLA, the Harold Miner. Congrats to George Ravling and his kids. Could it happen again? There's that half-court trap. What a play in Parks and Leitner together. Parks will ultimately become a very special player from out of California, Huntington Beach, Arena High School. Lute Olsen coached at that high school at one time. There's the ball down in the gut of the defense. There's Parks going to wheel to the goal. And there's the reach in. Charlie Ward with a second foul as Leitner goes to the line. Florida State has outscored Duke 10-2 to in the last three minutes. I really believe the game is played in different segments. 
and you really got to be careful. There's a look at Mike Krzyzewski, Tommy Amica. What a great passer he was when he played at Duke. That's another key element to the successful teams. The Indianas and the Duke basketball teams making free throws, making them count. Florida State from the spread, Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward says, Bob Hurley, you're an excellent defensive player, but I'm going to take you one-on-one -on -one right now. Ward with four points. There is no intimidation right now. Florida State firmly believes that they can win this basketball game from the moment we arrived here tonight, Ron, and talking to their players. Hurley for three. I'll tell you, Bob Hurley, when you need the big shot, just ask Jerry Tarkanian. He hit a big three against Vegas. I mean, a crucial three. Ask Michigan this year. He hit a big three and then made three foul shots when he was fouled by Weber in the last minute against Michigan and sparked the Duke Blue Devils. Tony Lang will come in. Grant Hill will go to the bench for this final 56 seconds. 39-35. Well, we've got to get excited and pumped up. Sitting on court side for these kind of games, Ron. Spread the court, try to use the clock. I want Duke to come out and challenge him. He's going to be content basically going in at halftime, either down two or down four. Let's see, it's a three, we get it down to one. They want to bring it to Sam for the last shot. They want to bring it to Sam Cassell to break down the defense. He'll be challenged by Brian Davis if Sam wants the rock, man. He says, get me the rock. Now get out of my way and let me have it. Let me have it. Look at Sam. He said, just like I did in Baltimore. Just like I did in Baltimore. Just like I did in Dunbar. Woo, Sammy, Sammy. Two-point game, six points for Sam Purcell. Watch Hurley looking diagonal. Watch Hurley looking diagonal. Oh, the spin dribble. Can't get a shot off. Oh, you're speechless. You want to say something? You're speechless, but I'm not speechless. Well, this is the toughest ticket in a long time in Tallahassee, and for very good reason. Two-point game, John Saunders. We got a great one. He's not going to lose now. He's got that look. You're right. I'd be amazed if it happened. Yeah, would I you? Would, so I would be amazed. I had Georgetown once like this get beat by Villanova in an unbelievable situation. I had... Uh, Trying to think where else. Uh, I don't know. This would be big time. I had Missouri. Ready for this? I have Missouri get beat by Anchorage. Oh, wow.
Gentlemen Association. As for the tenants, we've got a good one. Well, welcome back to Tallahassee here at halftime with a score of 39 to 37. The Florida State Seminoles only two points behind the number one team in the nation. Now, I want to make a point about something that Dick said early on in the ball game that 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 Duke does so very well. Not only did they come into Florida State's background and shoot almost three times as many free throws in the first half, but they hit 13 of the 14. Well, that's the difference right here in a two-point game. The special situations, they really make them count. They do an exceptional job of getting to the free throw line. We look at the field goal percentage, basically even. They're rebounding, but it gets right there. Three point shots. Duke has done an outstanding job. Four for seven versus one for six. Watch Florida State right now on a defensive end and how they're going to force the turnover and then they're going to convert in transition out of it. We're going to see them right now as we watch the ball dump to the inside to the Parks. There's the diagonal pass. There's the deflection, but they don't finish just with the steal. Charlie Ward's going to push it up the floor. There's the quick pitch to the wing. There's Dobard with the miss. And here comes your guy, the Skywalker, the high riser, the elevator man, Mr. Graham. Now look at Duke. Great spacing. Look at the spacing. 15, 17 feet apart, isolating Christian Leitner to get him the ball to go one-on-one. -on -one. Now there's the cut down the lane. The defense has to honor the cut. Now he spins into the lane because they can't give help. And there's the floating little jumper. And Dave Cowan said he can play there. Oh, oh no. My. George, hey, George <laughs> Bush is in trouble. That's what you were working out in your room this afternoon. Hey, George Bush is in trouble. I'll tell you. I heard those spray cams in there. I wondered what that was. I knew you weren't working on your head. <laughs> 92% from the free throw line for the Blue Devils in the first half. There's the zone defense now, the 2-3 matchup. Ryan Davis, he's the fifth option in the offense, but they give him the wide open perimeter shot, and he knocks it down. Ryan Davis, the senior out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. This is DT right now, danger time for Florida State. They have to play really well out of the gate. And the gate is spurt by Duke. Sarah, who started the game, back in working the guard. Nice move along the baseline. Couldn't get it to go, but he'll go to the free throw line. And Leitner is the one with the grimace on his face. We'll see. Yep. They try to go to a little isolation, spread the court, and then get a backdoor cut. Dobard gets the ball on the baseline. Beats Leitner to the inside. Matador defense by Leitner. Matador defense. Come on, Christian. All the scouts are charting and evaluating. Doesn't matter. They know what he can flat out do. Florida State's got some great new recruits coming in as well. What a recruiting class they have. Derek Carroll coming in. He's playing now at Maine Central Institute. In fact, he played with Sammy Cassell, went up here. Scott Shepard from out of Indiana, out of Carmel, Indiana. No, Indiana was not interested in Scott, but uh, Florida State was, and they wanted him badly. Maurice Robinson coming in out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Jonathan Kerner, 6'11", from Atlanta, Georgia. So the beat goes on and on here at Florida State. Thomas Hill couldn't get the handle on it, and as we have completed the first minute of the second half, five-point lead for Duke. Nice look, Cassell inside. He caught Hill staring at the basketball. No help, clear out the side. Sammy Cassell with a good backdoor cut. He's got eight points now, does Cassell. And every made score, they go to that trap. See, I don't understand why Duke's not flashing someone to the middle of the floor. There goes the quarterback. Douglas Edwards back on the floor with the three fouls. He really took a chance down here, didn't he? Because he, he came very close to going over the back. He's normally a strong finisher. Starts the game very slowly, but he's been finishing exceptionally strong, Douglas Edwards. Good ball movement. Another element of the Duke offense. Grant Hill not there. Goes up for the follow, and he will get the foul. Vicky Ficaro with an excellent call. Hill climbed the back. That's three on Grant. I'll tell you, he gives him that versatility, just like a Jim Jackson at Ohio State. It's such an advantage when you have guys who are multidimensional, who give you another perimeter player to give you such a strong backcourt game. Hurling comes over. Nice job of picking up defensively. Sarah with the pass. Dubard wasn't He's ready got... for it. Davis misses. 
Hey, Bobby Bowden, where are you? A little football going on. Bowden's probably out recruiting. Here's Mike Krzyzewski on that sideline. I think today when you rate a coach in every area of the game, recruiting, communication, motivation, bench strategy, teaching, academics, the whole ball of wax, Krzyzewski rates out A-plus in every area. He is an honor roll student. He is number one, and you're not in your head. You would rate. Oh, he, I'm probably his biggest fan. Now his wife Nikki's his biggest fan. And she's here today <laughs> biting her nails. Yep, she's sitting right behind Mike over across the way. Cassell steps back. He'll put up the three. Not there. Sarah battles for it. And he was whistled for the foul. Sarah was an interesting story. The way they found him was the USA Today in the honor rolls section. He had been told about him, Pat Kennedy, from Eddie Donahue, his former coach, hadn't called him in 10 years, and he said, hey, there's this kid Sir up in the Wilkes-Barre area. Come and get him. And then he looked at him. USA Today, they had 68 points in one game. He said, we got to go recruit him. Grand Hill. Grand Hill knocks it down. Stepped right in the gap of the defense. Grand Hill with a good look at the basket. He's now in double figures as well. Again, a good look and inside Cassell. What really makes that special, Sammy Cassell is running the backdoor cut. They're clearing out, they're spreading the court, but the ability to convert and finalize in traffic. Cassell saves it and then can't do anything, but that was close to you. I thought he's throwing a souvenir. I was ready to make that great catch. Look at Sammy. He was very loose today. Came to visit me, Ron. I got so many gifts today. I can't. I don't know what to do with them. Sweatshirts, shirts, T-shirts. I had a great book signing with these kids. They had over 500. Came out and we had a blast. And Sammy was there and all the players. I got you a sweatshirt. I want to try and isolate right now. I want to get Lang against Cassell in a mismatch. Davis on the baseline and he was fouled on the way to the hoop. Second foul on Syrup. Say a little piece of trivia about him. Only two people in the Wilkesbury community have been given the, the key to the city. Well, let's watch Layton. Layton trying to post up now. Look, I'm trying to get in deep, trying to hold off, trying to seal. Finish that story. Only two people have been given the special day with the key to the city. The Rocket, Ishmael was one, and Sarah was the other. Wow, that's great company. That's the conversion inside. And boy, he has just picked up another foul, and that's... Well, let me Lang really gives him a spark off the bench. Good offensive rebound. He's got long, long arms. Hurley makes that good penetration. Look at Hurley. Always oh, breaking down the defense. The dump down. He wants to get the ball to Leitner. Leitner's in too deep. There's the block. But Lang finishes it off and gets fouled by Gobard. Sarah, uh, uh, Dickey actually is the man they gave the foul to. And he's picked up three very quick ones here in the last couple of minutes. He's over penetrating, over handling the ball. Bobby's struggling a little bit now offensively. He's got to play a little bit more under control. There's the spread again, trying to go one on one, spread the floor. Pat Kennedy was talking yesterday after practice about how long Sarah will stay in the gym. Go hard with the gym. And if you don't run him off, the kid will just stay in there and shoot forever. He's a gym rat. Douglas Edwards made that happen with his eyes. A tremendous passing ability. He anticipated the open lane. Hurley. Oh, again, what a great look. Tony Lang is right there along the baseline. Bob Hurley may end up as the number one guy in assists in the history of college basketball before his career is over. You know, you mentioned his father in the in the first half. Earlier on this season, I did an interview with him, and I asked him about the similarities between his father and Mike, and he said there are many similarities. Oh, very, very much so. I've got to know Bob. I'm from North Jersey, grew up in his area. He's an intense competitor. I really believe he's the whole ball of wax. Watch, he's got Leitner. He's got Leitner. There's the guy. Oh! Charlie Ward will pick up the foul. And, and the crowd is, is reacting to Leitner hanging on the rim. But you can do that if you're going to come down wrong. And he definitely would have come down wrong. Mike Krzyzewski, when you think about five times in the last six years going to the Final Four, as we look at the comparison here, 13 for Leitner, 7 for Edwards. But remember, Edwards was in foul trouble. Leitner, 6-6 six six on a free throw line. And as I mentioned off the top of the telecast, the only game that Edwards did not score in double figures in was that first game against Duke. Christian finally misses one. Long arms. Played on a Pan Am team. 
Grant Hill played on that team. See, another great asset that Duke possessed, all their players played in the summer. They just didn't live off winning the national championship. They all played internationally, basically. Almost every guy on that team. I have to show your ticket to get into the Lady Seminole game versus Clemson right here, or for the baseball team, home season over there against the Clemson. That's okay, Charles no problem, no problem. Here's David. I got David here, Cowens. Yeah, he's right here. We got the big redhead. He and I got something in common. We both got the Ziggy in a pros. That's the only thing I got in common with him. I have no hair, I have no ability. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you want some? <laughs> I can hear you. I What'd can you say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where you living, Dave? Out in Massachusetts? Florida State guy, right? You living in Massachusetts? Yeah, I'm up here in Boston. Isn't this great? Oh, yeah, it's great. Super. I think you're really enjoying this, aren't you? Oh, I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm great. almost as excited as this. I see. I, I, I hope they don't get away from him now, though. I know. You know, all it takes is one spurt. Boom, boom, boom. That's eight, right. One. I'm all for that. It's all my gyp sheets. All my gyp sheets. Dave Cowan, yeah, 1,340 right. rebounds. What's the I said three years. Well, we're back in Tallahassee, 50 to 43, just over 15 minutes left of this one. And take a look at who has joined us here, <laughs> Dave Cowens. Hey, thanks was, for coming. You're having fun hey, here Hey, baby, tonight. we're I, close. <laughs> hey, we got a chance to make history tonight. I was telling, I'm almost as excited as this guy. Hey, Dave, let me ask you right now. You've seen Christian Leitner play. You played and starred in the NBA. What kind of NBA potential player is he? See, the guy really makes the game look easy, so you know he's going to be excelling on every level. He, he does things defensively, cuts off the angles, plus he can jump, you know, and he, he's a good shooter. Okay, we're going to get you to stick around for a bit here with 15 minutes left. Uh, we'll get your opinions as we continue to call the action. It's my pleasure. Sarah misses on the jumper to whistle and the foul, and that's going to be against Duke. Really dangerous time right now, Ron, in terms of got to be very careful for a Duke spurt that can break this thing open. It's important now that Pat Kennedy's team finds a way to score to stop this little edge that Duke has going up seven. It was Leitner with the foul. It's his second third team foul. Great pass. That's a great look, Dave. He has great anticipation ability, doesn't he, Dave? It seems like the whole, the whole team, they're always looking up for the back doors and dumping it inside, and they're playing with them inside. I love the way Edwards passes the ball. He's got to get a little bit more movement on the offensive end without the ball. As the zone defense. Those hey, guys make careers in moving without the ball. Lang and he was fouled. Bill Bard will pick it up. Dave, let's talk about the rejuvenation as far as the enthusiasm and what is happening down at the school. Football has been so big under Bobby, but uh, Pat has done a great job of, of getting legions of fans, hasn't he? Anytime you get in playing quality competition all the time, it's got to help your program. I know you would have loved to play in the ACC throughout your career. Oh, yeah. Lang blocked by Dobard. Leitner. Great pump fake. Dave Collins has to appreciate big man play inside. The pump fake. Talk about it. Yeah, he knocked one, almost knocked one of his players out. <laughs> pump fake on it. Yeah, as soon as you can get him up in the air, you don't have to move the ball a lot. Just get him with the eyes and the head looking up. Well, Dave, you were a tenacious rebounder, but you also had great versatility. You could come out and shoot the jumper. Sammy Cassell knocks down a trifecter. That's what they need. Back to four. No, what they need is you. Why don't you go dress up and help them out inside? I'd love to see you and Leighton. They're desperate. Hey, you and Leighton are head to head. Wow. Oh, look at him trying to post Sammy Cassell inside. This guy's got to wake up. He's got to wake up. Give it back to him. Uh, had the trailer. Had the trailer. Should have kicked it right back to Edwards for the dunk. Debard with the miss, and here comes Duke. Lang and an accept for the call. I have a question.
question for you, Dave. You coached in the league. You and I have something in common. <laughs> the only thing I have in common with you, we both got the yaks. You have coaches. more wins than I do. <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, can Bob Hurley play in the NBA? I have no idea. I mean, now it's so nice because it's opened up and the little guys can get in there. You know, who knows? Remember the guy from Indiana who thought he was going to make it? He played on a Bobby Knight, oh, the little Steve guard. The yeah, and then he just couldn't make it for some reason. I don't know. I feel this kid can play in the league. I feel he has that good penetration ability, quickness, and he's a tough competitor, and he wins, Dave. He wins. Well, he's not pretty, so he's got to be a good basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Duke as they run the floor. Oh, there's transition. Nobody gets back. That's a jam. That's the first one tonight, though, Dick. Yeah, it really is. And Duke has been known for jamming the basketball. In fact, they had 77. They averaged five dunks a game coming into this game. I'm just worried. And hope fatigue won't take it. You know, because Florida State has got to be pumped up by a number one team. Chance to upset somebody. So it's only a little tired, you know, in preparation. Hey, what's, what's your reaction to the, the pros going to the Olympics? Oh. They won. Well, that was a great move, but... I don't know. I think they ought to have more collegiate players. You know, split it up. Six and six, I don't know, but just to have two, I don't, you know? This game is really picking up the intensity. Oh, yeah. Nicky Paparo makes the offensive foul call. Dave, certainly a pleasure having you with us. We want to wish you the best. You were one of my favorite guys ever to watch play because you played with such emotion and intensity. They gave you best every time on the floor. Well, this is a great game. You got to do it justice. Okay, Dave. Thanks a lot. Dave, good to see you. Third foul against Leitner. Watch the right side of your screen and you'll see it happen. Oh, there's the screen. He lets the elbow. He was stationary, but as soon as he put that little elbow out, Certainly not deliberate. He anticipated the guy coming into him, but a good call by Dickie for Powell. So three on late here, and he will have to sit down for a bit. Oh, look at the hedge by Duke. Hedging on a defensive end. Speed to Gilbard. That's Davis with the reach in. Duke does an excellent job of hedging defensively. Stepping out on the screen, giving help, taking away the driving lane. Davis now with his third. Fifth team foul on the Blue Devils. The intensity has really picked up here, Ron. Yeah, it really has, and the crowd. In fact, the students have nobody is sitting. Everybody is standing where the students are. This guy's talented. They're doubling up on him. They got to get a good angle. Swing the ball side to side and try to get Edwards involved. Cassell with the dish. Gilbar. Gilbar with the monster jam. The baseline beauty. Look at him. He's excited. And they love it here in Seminole Land. It's Tomahawk time. Get the chop going, baby. The nose go. Bananas. There's the penetration. There's the dish. And he takes it up. He says, get out of my way, baby. Get out of my way. Mr. Dolboy. Tony Ooh. Lang comes up for the block and picks up his first foul. Florida State can cut it to a one-point game. We got ourselves a good one, Mr. Franklin. You keep nodding your head. You like it. This is fun. A little better than Tuesday night in a blowout Indiana over Purdue. <laughs> we try to use every bit of material imagined. But as Duke, they exchange on the baseline when they run up the floor in transition. Cherokee Parks sitting it inside. Dobart and Parks, good matchup. Dobart beat them to the spot. Turnover, Duke. They're on the floor, 11.29 to play. 54-52 Blue Devils. Hey, did, was it pretty good having Dave on? I thought so. Is it, he, it was pretty oh, good having him on. Yeah, he's... I tell you what, I was watching him before the game, and also I was on the He really is excited. Yeah. He's like a kid. He's having a great time. I think he's... Hey, you got a Hall of Famer. you got to have him on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> time out, baby. Time out. Get some time out. Okay. Awesome, baby. That place is rocking, man. You got to get the crowd. They're rocking. Woo, they rocking. Rock and roll. Well, I tell you, this crowd is really into it. A new record attendance, and they have not been seated at all in the second half. The Knolls are awesome, baby, says the sign. And right now, probably Mike Krzyzewski would not disagree. Big Monday, look at this one. Number six and number 12 leads it off of the triple header. 7.30 Eastern time, Connecticut and Syracuse. And then K-State at Kansas. Get a chance to see Roy Williams and his guys. They're number five in the nation. Then Sports Center and followed by Pacific and Fresno State. The triple header on Monday here on ESPN. Jimmy Beheim lost to Providence, but what a surprise he has been. Oh, look at this right here. I must have made all these signs up, Ron. <laughs> you were a busy guy this afternoon. I'll tell you, you know, Jimmy Beheim, what a surprise they have been. I think Missouri's been a real surprise as well. Watch out, though. LSU is starting to come right now. Had a big win over Tennessee. The real deal is playing like the real man. Edwards misses the finger roll. It's Grant Hill who comes away with it. Hurley with the give back to Lakeman. That is a perfect execution of the secondary phase of the transition game. The trailer man. The cell. He can score. He's a bona fide scorer. He's not a great shooter. What he is is basically a scorer. He can shoot the perimeter shot, but he's also a driver and a slasher. Coming out of Sanjak last year, probably considered the best point guard coming out of the junior colleges, but he's been a shooting guard here at Florida State. Also starred for Bob Wade at Dunbar to produce so many great players. Reggie Williams, Dave Wingate, Tyro Muggsy Bowles. Look at him. He loves this. He loves this scenario. That's four fouls on Edwards. It's amazing when you look at the minutes Go played. Go bar, I beg your pardon. The Thousands minutes played by Bob Hurley. Ron, he's constantly on the floor, faces relentless pressure, game in and game out, and always seems to meet the challenge. Go Bard will have to come out of the ball game. Reed will come back in. I guess Florida State has proven they belong in the ACC basketball-wise. Don't forget, though, they were a good basketball team in the Metro Conference. They won the tournament last year. You know, in fact, to show you how the ACC was ready to embrace them, Dick, last year when they won the Metro tournament, that's going to be a foul on Graham. The ACC tournament was going on, and I was told by people in the ACC when the announcement was made that Florida State had won the Metro, it was like a standing ovation from the crowd. They were very pleased with it because they knew what they were getting. There's certainly going to be some addition in football. There's no doubt what they're going to do there. <laughs> they went into a 1-2-2 two, two set, Duke. A deep set. Double stack down inside. They run a multitude of different offenses. They execute. They execute so well, basically. Out of all their different elements they utilize. The difference in this basketball team has been the point guard play in that one of six games out of Charlie Ward. Number 12, they made an adjustment. Put him at the point guard slot and put this guy at the scorer's slot. See, Douglas, again, Edwards. And I don't mean to constantly harp on him. 32. Now he's standing in the corner where they want him. They're in that spread. But he has a tendency, I've watched him in the past, not active enough offensively. He's too talented to stand. And the easiest guy to play, Ron, is a guy that does not move. About to hit nine minutes and 30 seconds left in this one. Duke by two points. Grant Hill will push it up. There's the versatility to Hill. Rebound, play That's the a point. great point, yeah. Because he signaled to Hurley, I'll bring it up. Move on across midcourt. Robert Hurley seems under control during his first year when he played there. Turned the ball over a lot, played a little bit out of control. 
Davis for three Charlie Ward sky. Charlie with the bounce pass. I'm going to say it was touched last by Duke. You know, one of the things that Charlie will experience next year if he does win that starting quarterback job here at Florida State, Pat's going to get him after having played a football season where in the past as a freshman he was a punter, but he didn't get knocked around. I don't know what kind of difference it'll make, but he would have a different experience next year. Hurley, not there, that's Edwards. That was a good time rebounder. They got the running game right here. Graham suspends. Reed with the foul. Andre Reed with the big offensive rebound. We got a tie game, my friends. Don't turn it off. We got the number one team in the nation. Everybody said, invincible, baby. We got eight minutes on the clock, and it is time. Well. That's a double up. As soon as the ball goes to late here, they got the double up. The possession arrow will show the ball to stay with Duke. What can be big late in this game? Free throw shooting. Duke's an outstanding free throw shooting team. As a team, they are shooting 74.1%. Here comes the chance. Defense. We know they're going to look to go to late here against Reed. Grant Hill trying to create. Not there. Should have taken the ball right at Reed, who has a history of fouling. Spread the four. Use some of the clock. Pat Kennedy wants to be able to go to the last three minutes with a chance to win. You could see the last time they had a lead in the ballgame. They jumped out to a seven-point lead. Cassell, not there. Thomas Hill can't get it to go, but he'll go to the free throw line for a couple. Duke does an excellent job getting in the lanes in transition. They quickly get out of the lane with the two hills, Grant Hill and Thomas Hill. They run the 45-degree angle cut, and they got the guy that can run the break. Notice how he gives it up, you young kids. He gives it up at the foul lane. He doesn't make that over penetration to create the opportunity for the charge. Grant picks up the foul of his fourth as Cassell goes to the bench, and Sura will come back into the lineup for Florida State. Well, he wants to rest Cassell for the finish. You can see that graphic on Thomas Hill. He's averaging 15.6 points a game, and this is only his third point, so he's been a little silent tonight. Well, they've done a good job neutralizing him, but it's pretty tough to get everybody involved. When you look at that club, they've got so many guys that can score. Duke by one. Seven and a half minutes left in this one. Summer trying to post inside all. Not a good look. Oh, Hurley with the pass. And Thomas goes up and gets the free one. Well, he sets that up with a little spin move to the lane. And then always looking diagonal. All the Duke kids touch the floor right now. They all touch the floor. That means we're ready to play defense. That's a trademark they have. Touch the floor and send in a message. We're ready to get down and play some dirty, tough defense. Graham all oh, yeah. the Oh, my. Graham says, where's the defense? Where's the defense? He's got an explosive move in the great legs that you talked about, Ron. He's got 12 points. Didn't come in until about, what, six minutes was gone in the first half. They're playing a little bit soft on Hurley to try and take away his driving ability. See, notice Ward, he's not coming out challenging. He say, Bobby, you want to play with the ball out there? We'll allow that. Little curl move for Grant Hill to get him up to the foul line. Now going to try to reverse the ball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Curly for three. Nobody blocked out. Davis blocked by Reed. Duke will get it back. One of the fundamentals that's really a really not utilized enough. Blocking out. So essential. 6.07 left to play. Duke by one.
Vancouver Concourse. Freeze it right there. Oh, yes, I'm going to freeze it back a little further. Right. Right there. Now he's spotting. He already sees who makes that cut behind the defense. Who is that? He Tommy Sell. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Right down here, diagonal cut. All right. Okay. What's the foul situation here? Hey, keep us posted down the end of the game. Timeouts, foul situation, penalties, all that. No, I'm talking to the stat guy. What do we got right now? Uh, He's talking to the stat man. Team fouls. Yeah, keep us posted. No, I'm talking to the stat guy. Yeah, nobody. Well, he rotated over a little bit slow. That was just a great offensive move. All right. All right. Should I, you pick a. Should I take. Here's where Duke utilizes the defensive ability to force the turnover and then score in transition. Now we watch him. Davis with the steal puts the ball in the hands of the best point guard in college basketball. Freeze it! Right there, he's going to throw the diagonal pass. Watch Hill along the baseline, sneak open. Hurley anticipated the move, the diagonal cut. Boy, that's just reading your teammate perfectly. And now here is Florida State going to go right down the lane. There's the drive. Defense a little slow, rotating over. Florida State scoring big in the paint area. Duke has missed five of their last six shots. And for that matter, Florida State has missed five of their last seven. Look at the points in the paint also. Almost two to one. Florida State over Duke. Leighton has the rest, comes back in, doing a timeout. Thomas Hill for three. Unlucky on that one, in and out. And a foul against Davis. You know, you look at this Duke basketball team, they lost seven games last year. That's four right now on Davis. They lost seven games last year. They lose to North Carolina in the ACC championship. And then they have that run where they play just brilliant basketball to win the entire gold trophy. And this year come back undefeated with everybody shooting for them. They've really only been tested twice. Virginia played them really tough at Virginia, and Michigan had them beaten over in Ann Arbor, except Duke made all the big plays when they had to win at the end of the game. Free throw line. Win and lose close games at the free throw line. Boy, Sarah misses that one. Foul situation now. Dobard with four, Sarah with three, Graham with three, Edwards with three. And for Duke now, Brian Davis with four, Leitner and Grant Hill with three apiece. They're going to start taking advantage of Leitner right now because he should have a tremendous advantage against Andre Weed. Leitner now to try to isolate him. Not a good jumper by Leitner. Oh, what? They got the trap! for Edwards. First time the Florida State has led since back early when they were on top, 11 to 10. Douglas Edwards has a lot of ability. There's the block shot. There goes another one. Get it. Oh! Ward. Gassell wanted to take the three. Thomas Hill right there. He deflects the ball, and here comes Hurley. That possession could be big. They should have had an open layup. Ward drives it on Leitner, and it's not there. It's Grant Hill. Really did not play well in two possessions, and Duke comes back. Good offensive rebound by Hill. Really a sloppy play in conversion in the last two possessions in transition. Most teams really want to chart out that you score 60% of your transition opportunity. Pat Kennedy may really play that over and over again in his mind tonight if they were to lose this game, Rob, because they have an easy opportunity. Gassell with the foul, his third. So he goes on our list. You know, Duke hit 13 of 14 in the first half at the free throw line. 
They're only three of six at the line here in the second half. That really is where shooting better than 74 percent as a team. That still for the ball game is going to put them up over 80 percent. We're tied again. Excellent rotation. Grant Hill delivers, comes to the line. He's, He's got seven now. They're going to use seven o'clock. They've done a good job, Florida State, controlling the rhythm, the tempo of this game, not allowing Duke to get into those up and down transition opportunities that they love. See, they're going to use a lot of the clock. They're going to say, heck, if we can take this into the last two minutes with a chance to win, they're going to allow us to play in this tight. We're going to take advantage of it. As Duke's sitting back, they're using the clock. Oh, that's a dangerous pass. Not really a good play right there by Ward. Shot clock is at eight. Sammy Cassell and Douglas Edwards have to be the two guys that want to deliver. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, summer, somebody tell him that he was playing high school last year in Woodsbury, not playing against the number one team in the nation. He has no fear. Gobard and Leitner. Leitner standing. Gobard trying to front him defensively. They're really battling inside. There's that head fake. Douglas Edwards with the foul line. And that'll do it for him. Four fouls. Leitner really now trying to get free on the interior. I love the way Christian utilizes that ball fake. Now, here he is being fronted. See, he's showing a hand to the baseline. He steps up a little bit so they can't get a lot of help. Now he rotates over. They double up on him. Now they try to front him. And he used the single reverse spin move. Now, look at the head fake. See, the head fake made that happen. As he really used that head and ball fake exceptionally well. That's rare. Made his first six. So Edwards will stay in the game with his fourth. The 319 left, Pat says we're going to roll the dice and leave him in there. So let's take a break. 319 to play. Duke and Florida State nodded. when I said that's all for him. I had to bar it in my mind. I tried to cover oh, it up. I said he'd go to the bench. Apologize. Oh, you didn't say five. No, I just said that's it for him. <laughs> uh, nobody. Uh, anyway, sorry. January the 16th, 1986. Wake against Duke. Danny Ferry. Of course, you recognize that face. And here's the fast break. Duke trying to jump it out as Dawkins will nail the jumper. 92 to 63 to final. Duke became 16 and 0 with that. Tonight they are trying to equal because that is the best start in Duke Blue Devil history. That was the team that lost to Louisville. They won 37 games that year. Had an amazing run. They lost to Louisville in the national championship over in Dallas. That was the year LSU was there as well. A surprise team. On any given night, they have every sign here imaginable. Okay, we'll give you the situation. Timeouts, each team with three apiece. We have 319 left in regulation and tied at 62. You know, Ron, what's really interesting as well is the fact that Florida State has not played sensational basketball to be where they're at. They have shown that basically they haven't had that miracle night to be able to hang with Duke. I think the point that you made, you expect Duke to be poised because that's just what they get from Krzyzewski. 
But I think Florida State has been terribly poised, particularly in the second half. Especially when Duke took a little lead on them. They hung their seat. They're going to try to make this game go to the last possession. They're saying, okay, you want to hang with us? We're going to take it down on the shot clock. I think that's great strategy by Pat Kennedy. I mean, his club is the heavy underdog. Here they are. They're in a position to beat the number one team in America. They're going to go right to the finish with them. Ward. Ball will go to Duke. Let's go to John Saunders quickly in the studio. Some big news for us. John, what's going on? Thank you. Our score, 62 apiece. Now, here's where you got to know the strengths and weaknesses of your basketball team. You got to know all your key options, and that's why that guy is one of the great players in college basketball and ranks right now as one of the top three Souths in the game. 12 points for him now. Love the monster Nash down of Kentucky, Mr. Mashburn. Rodney Rogers, another great South. Well, here it is. They're going to use the clock again. Down a deuce. Under two minutes, they're one possession away from taking a lead in this game on a three-point shot. Okay, this crowd, the ones that are not on their feet, they're biting their fingernails. Cassell dishes it inside, knocked away, and Linkner will come away with the basketball as Cassell is called for the foul. The last four on him. The last two possessions, Florida State has not gotten a shot at the basket. Foul is on Sam Cassell in his fourth. You have to make each possession count. When you're utilizing the clock like that, you at least got to get a good look at the basket and get a good shot. But in the last two possessions, Duke has shut down Florida State. They have not been able to get an opportunity to get a look at the basket Back and on the shoot the ball. You're not going to consistently put Christian Leitner on the line and expect him to come up empty every time, Ron. That's right. Leitner for the year, 83%. They almost have that feeling when you see the Duke players, like that feeling of that we are number one, we are the best, and we're going to win, no matter how tough you play us. Hey, don't forget Southern Mississippi and Tulane coming up next. Let's see what they do in this possession. They're down three. Will they play passive again? Will they go into a regular offense? Who will take charge? Will it be Cassell? Will it be Edwards? Game clock now, 90 seconds left. Three-point game. They got a score in this possession. This is a big possession. Grant Hill with the steal, and he'll jam it home. I'd get a timeout, baby. I'd get a T.O. right now, Mr. Kennedy, and try to set something up. I'd get a T.O. The sell for three. Not there. Knocked inside. Dilbard, and he has it partially blocked. Every big play at the end here has been all Duke. Every big play has been Duke. Defensively, offensively, Grant Hill with the anticipation, stepping in a passing lane. That's why they're number one. Cassell has just fouled out of the game. 15 points for him. Grant Hill made a great drive a little bit earlier. Now he comes back in the defensive end. There's the long arms. Takes the passing lane. And there's the deuce by Hill. 105 left in the ball game as Florida State has called timeout. Great teams in every sport seem to always be able to make the big play. Great athletes make the big play, whether it's tennis, you got a heck of a match going on, and it's you wonder why a Monica Sellis makes that great baseline drive. And you say the same thing right here, and you look in a basketball game, the Hills, the Leitners, they find a way to win. You know, I was really interested in visiting with Mike before the ball game. One of the guys that he really likes to talk about, that he has read everything that, that Mr. Iba has, has ever written about or had written about basketball. And, and I asked him, I said, when you talk with a guy like Mr. Iba, when you were on the, the coaching staff with, who coached the Olympics, what did you talk to him about? And he said, I asked Mr. Iba things about like how you act, conduct on the sideline, even things like that, just spacing on the floor. He said, just the guy knows so much about the game of basketball, but the thing that impressed this is Mike Krzyzewski most about Mr. Iba is he said so many coaches today think they're bigger than the game. Mr. Iba never did that. He always had humility. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Mike Krzyzewski's got poise, humility, and he's got a brain that's unbelievable, and he knows how to blend the unit together. Here's Duke 
They've been on the ropes here, had a chance to maybe really, really go down near the end of this game, but they found a way to put themselves in position to be up five right now with a minute and five to go. So here's the situation. Timeouts, Duke with three, Florida State now with two. Total fouls, Florida State already over the limit at 11. Possession error goes to the Seminoles. Well, they got to think right now about the three. They got to score quickly. Five-point game with 65 seconds left. Well, if he nails these two, you're down seven. And Grant Hill is a 75% free throw shooter. That's the third one in a row he's made here in the last two minutes. He made a great steal, a great drive, showing why he's such a versatile player. <clears throat> Gets them both. You're down seven right now. You're looking at three possessions. A minute and three on a clock. They got to speed up the tempo right now. Get a quick deuce if you can get a deuce. Get the quick deuce. Edwards misses. Loose. Charlie Ward fights for it, and he'll be called for the foul. Really a shame. Winning time when you get to the last four minutes. Pat Stewart did not execute. Didn't get the kind of shots he wanted. Four fouls right now on Ward. I think he'll look back big at that one transition opportunity when they had where it looked like an open layup and they didn't come up with a score. Then it came back again the second time and didn't score in that sequence. Louisville, six down to North Carolina, Charlotte. Jeff Mullins, a Duke graduate, one of the greatest players ever to play at Duke, along with Art Heyman, Danny Ferry, Johnny Dawkins, and Christian Leitner. Those are my five greatest ever to wear a Duke uniform. You know, right now you got to shoot panic time. I mean, you got to shoot the three. No, he's out of the game. Uh, he's fouled out. <laughs> uh, Sura, Sura, or also a Graham looking for the three. They're done. Well, at least it took us for the last two minutes. You know, they took us for the last two minutes. Yep. They were in position. I thought they did it right. They just, I don't know. Just didn't get a shot. I think you're right. So how much time was left when they missed that? Uh, oh, gee, I don't know. Six minutes, five minutes, but still it would have been a big one. Because that's when the lead was seesawing. No, they were up one. They had got, taken the lead by one. <laughs> hey, there's two Dukies. Look at them. <laughs> I tell you, those Dukies. I just love it down at Camden Indoor Stadium. I'll tell you, Ron, it's one of the special environments. The kids are right on the floor. Here at Florida State, they put them way up on top, and I think that's unfair. The kids were telling me today at the uh, student union, they said, Coach, we got to be on the floor like the Dukies are. But they put all the alumni on the sideline. Arizona up 10. There's Ohio State leading by 10 over Ludu. Bay Collins, who was nice enough to come over and go on with us. I know he's disappointed, but he, he was having fun here tonight watching his uh, alma mater battle the number one team in the nation. Making those free throws count at winning time. By the way, you talk about playing well under pressure. Duke was down by two. All of a sudden, this is a 10-0 run by there. Yeah, they just really made all the plays here in the last three minutes, and that's why they're undefeated. And they're going to now match the best start ever at Duke. 71-62. Well, we had some drama. We certainly had a situation where it looked like it was going to go to the last possession. Graham with the three-pointer, not there. Leitner with the board, and no shot clock. Duke can wrap it up on this trip right here. Jam City. People are going to look at the score and think this thing was a route. And there's his wife, Nikki, a real ardent supporter. As so many of the wives sit there and root their guys on. Well, for people who were not fortunate enough to watch this one tonight, they can look at the score and say, well, ho-hum, Duke won again. They don't have any idea what happened in the first 38 minutes of this game. Hey, for two minutes, with two minutes to go, he's looking at a one-point game. Look at Brian Davis. He's yelling up to the fans up there in Seminole land. Played him tough, Rod, but not tough enough. And there's the two guys. 
shaking hands. Mike Krzyzewski gets another W class in the capital C. So the number one team in the nation goes to 16-0, and, and that equals their best start ever. John Saunders, let's go to you, 75-62. The Dukies won it.